Hello everyone, I am Thorstein from Cinema Terror, and today I got a sleazy 1987 Italian giallo from Lombardo Bava himself, called Delirium. The story in Delirium revolves around an erotic magazine amusingly called Pussycat, and its owner Gloria, played by the lovely Serena Grandi. While in the midst of a potential takeover, the magazine starts to see their models get killed off one by one, in the most gruesome ways possible. Gloria starts to receive photos of the murder scenes, making her convinced that the killer has her on his list of future victims. But who could this cold-blooded killer be? And why has he set his eyes on Gloria and the models of her men's magazine? The only way to find out is to sit down and spend 90 minutes with Delirium. According to the trivia page on IMDb, Dario Argento was attached to direct this one early on, but pulled out due to the script being changed in a manner that he was not pleased with. And you can see some traces of the material that would have been more Argento-ish in the final film. Feeling inspired after doing the two awesome Demons movies, Lamberto Bava took over and tried to do his best in giving the film creative, violent and interesting murder set pieces. And of course, lots and lots of nudity. And that it did. If you've seen some of his other jellies like You'll Die at Midnight, A Blade in the Dark and Macabre and felt he might be lacking a bit of the stylish flair that his father Mario was known for, then this will be a nice surprise for you. Not that any of it makes much sense, mind you. While the violent scenes are creative and colorful, definitively the highlight of the film, the rest of the story is told very bland, with a nearly TV soap opera quality to it. The story is actually not that bad and generic as many of the later entry jellies tended to be. While well, I wasn't at the end of my seat when the killer is revealed, it did turn out to be someone that I hadn't guessed as they do a good job in setting up a few different potential villains. I think the reason for my lack of engagement was the poor characters that we have to deal with. None of them are very interesting at all, even though the cast itself is quite cool with people like Daria Nicolodi, David Brandon and even George Eastman showing up in supporting roles. I could. <laughs> Ah, you'll never change. You'll be a villain till the day you die. <laughs> <laughs> the main part was given to the voluptuous Serena Grandi, who European cult film fans might remember from Joe D'Amato's Anthropopagus or Tinto Brass's Miranda. She's a beauty and alluring to look at, but she's not able to bring that much out of her character. Not that there is much attention given to character development and stuff like that in this film though. Instead, we are presented with eye candy in the form of nudity and violence. The music for these scenes also promises excitement, as the movie is acknowledging that this is the good stuff that you came here for. The soundtrack is actually awesome, and the British musician Simon Boswell deserves a lot of credit for his work here. While starting out in a band like pretty much every other musician, Boswell went on to find more success as a record producer, and even produced one of the biggest selling Italian albums of all time when he worked with the pop sensation Renato Zero. His transition to making music for movies started when he collaborated with Dario Argento on Phenomena, and since then he kept working steadily in the genre. In the early 2000s, he actually also started making music for a couple of Norwegian films, so Boswell has definitively done a lot so far in his life, and I will be listening to the theme song of Delirium for a long, long time. Oh, and I also want to mention that Lamberto brought on a new generation of Bava on this production, as he gave the chance to be both the assistant director and casting director to his son Fabrizio Bava, sometimes also credited as Roy Bava. If you like big boobs, and who doesn't, then there will be a plethora of that to be enjoyed in Delirium. There is so much sexual content in this that it wouldn't take much adjustment to turn this into a softcore drama. It almost feels like two different visions, as the erotic parts, which by all means are nice to look at, doesn't feel like it belongs together with these elaborate, bizarre kill scenes that try to add a psychological aspect to the mix. Delirium is a weird 80s giallo that I had fun with. It's uneven and might not have the best pacing or know how to justify its strange visuals. But if you enjoy and can be forgiving towards sleazy Italian films from this time period, then I think you will look past the errors and inconsistencies and still have an enjoyable time. Lamberto Bava's Delirium gets a score of 3 out of 5. Have you seen Delirium? What are your thoughts on it? 
And now do you think it ranks amongst Bava Jr's other Jallies? I have reviews up for a total of 3 other Lamberto Bava films on my channel, so if you are interested in my thoughts on Demons 2, The Torturer or You'll Die at Midnight, then they are all available to be watched right now. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video and what I try to do here. I'll be back with more videos as soon as possible, so thank you for spending some of your valuable time here on Cinema Terror.